Number one, using the color wheel. A huge reason why your coloring sucks is because you're not using the color wheel right. This little thing right here is in every art program and it's called the color wheel, I think. See this dull color right here? Disgusting. What you want to do is when you're selecting colors, slide the color picker just a little bit if you want to select a deeper, smegsier shade. And then BAM! Um, color theory who? I don't know her. I only know how to use this color wheel. Cannot live without it. Number Number two, steal. Now, I am not talking about stealing art. If I was, I would have been cancelled ages ago. This was just to trigger some people. So what I'm talking about is stealing art styles. If you see someone else's work and you like it, steal the art style. Literally every master artist does this. The way an artist's brain functions is that it doesn't function at all. We learn with our hands. So if you practice in their style, that is how you're gonna learn the process. You're gonna force yourself to study every part of that drawing to be able to remake it. Once you learn from your favorite artist, simply add your own ramen flavor. Ramen doesn't have any taste on its own. That's why you gotta add your own seasoning. Like who knows, your most favorite artist might just be a Walmart version of another artist, but you'll never know that. I mean, there's a lot of people copying Sam Does Art's art style on Instagram right now, but they still get likes. A lot of people are telling this dude that they're just a copycat of this well-known artist I can't pronounce both of their names, but like even if he didn't copy, he'd sure as hell be better than those haters. As long as you don't outright steal, you're good baby. Just add your own ramen flavor. Number three, use the right brushes. Contrary to popular belief, I do not believe in the saying that real artists don't need fancy equipment. Bro, at school I'd be using like these cheap pens and it feels like crap to write using them. As a result, my handwriting was crap. But then sometimes when I use a different pen, the feel is absolutely different. Bro, that baby glided through paper so smoothly, it felt like touching a baby's butt. That's the way I felt when I used new brushes. It just blends so well, so nicely. Digitally, of course. I don't draw on paper, that stuff is expensive as hell. So am I saying to go ahead and buy new equipment and brushes right now? No. But if there are free resources, dang, why would you let the opportunity pass? Obviously, what works for me wouldn't work for everybody, but ever since I installed these babies, I felt powerful. My brushes are in the description in case you need them. Number four, use references. Another controversial topic. Why is this even controversial, like literally? So a lot of people seem to think that all pro artists just draw what's in their mind, which I mean, it's true. There really are art gods who can like draw all sorts of magical hee hees, but they obviously had to start somewhere. Now, for me, I literally cannot draw without using references. So the reason why you should be using references is that your imagination sucks. In order to draw something, you have to know what it looks like, obviously. So you have to like look for references of poses, lighting, and other stuff that you haven't mastered yet. You should treat references like Asian parents treat their children. They're never enough. So bottom line is, all artists use references, you just don't see it. In my experience, most artists don't really show their reference because A, why would they when you should be looking at their art? And also, it might look like crap because when you look at the reference, oh, it's all good. And then, whoa, is that your drawing? It sucks. It looks weird after looking at the reference. Anyway, a lot of artists use references more than you think, so don't be afraid to use references. Number five, leave like your dad left you. What I want you to do after finishing your art is to leave, bounce out of there, and then come back like a day later. What this is gonna give you is a fresh perspective. If you stare at your artwork for so long, you're gonna get used to it, and when you get used to it, you won't see the ugly flaws. This is why when you look at your art years after, you go like, ew, I drew that? So the thing is, you should be using the tools to make yourself spot the flaws, such as the mini preview and the corner, this is going to give you a mini version of the overall shape of your ugly drawing. Or you can flip your canvas, which I do like literally every 10 seconds, or you can leave and come back a day later. Get some fresh air, you know? 
touch some grass. When you come back and spot the mistakes, use the liquify tool, which is the next tip. Number six, liquify. So this is not available to all art programs, so let's just go by this quickly. The liquify tool is a dang holy grail. What the liquify tool is for artists is like what rice is to Asian people. We freaking love it cannot live without it. Asians didn't build rice, rice built Asians. So I'm pretty sure everyone knows what this does. However, I just feel the need to remind you guys that this is literally the best tool ever in case you want to fix some deformities in your art. Basically, I mix all of these tips together. I constantly flip my art to spot the mistakes, you know, I leave, walk my dogs or something, I don't know. And then when I come back, it's like, oh bro, it looks like crap. But luckily, I have a liquify tool. So cool. Ever since Clip Studio had an update and they finally had a liquify tool, it literally cured my depression, okay? I've been wanting it since years ago. Unfortunately, this is only available to digital artists. So another win for us, I guess. Digital artist supremacy. Though I'm pretty sure it's available for Ibis Paint, so that's pretty cool. You should use it often. Number seven, light source. So this isn't a tip about tools or something. This is more of a practical tip. This is a huge mistake that beginners make and even pros. I used to have these drawings where the face has this lighting and the body has that lighting. They're different. And it's hard to notice that at first because we're freaking blind as drawers. That's why you gotta do the previous tip. Anyway, before you draw anything at all, make sure you know where your light source is. Number eight, stick to a color palette. This is somewhat related to the first tip, which is using the color wheel. Don't add like all kinds of random colors. Instead, just stick to like five base colors or something. This is gonna do two things. It's gonna make your art look easier on the eyes. And number two, it makes your Instagram feed more aesthetic. More aesthetic means more likes. Do it for the cloud. The very last tip is to break rules. But before that, you gotta learn fundamentals. Like freaking shading, shapes, perspective, and all the other crap. I do not know them by name. All those people telling you to learn fundamentals, it doesn't have to be boring. You could be learning fundamentals by doing things that you love. And when you do learn fundamentals, now is the time to break them. Make the eyes bigger. Give them micro small noses. Make the boobies so big that they look weird. I don't care. The point is, you have to learn realistic proportions before you go and break the rules. Because it's gonna look weird if you don't. I spent a whole lot of time drawing these ugly realistic portraits so I could learn proportions. It was years of frustration, but is it worth it? Heck yeah. So I do have this amazing tool that will help you and your mom draw and practice. Click this vid, you won't regret it. But also like, like this video and share it with your homies. And I'll see you there. Stay cool.